Hello everyone! Welcome to the third edition of Self Care Sunday with me, your host, Katie Ploss. I am so excited that you're here with me this week on our second week of our 30-day self-care challenge. So for those of you who have been with me since the beginning and are on day 14 or 15 um, of your self-care challenge, congratulations for incorporating self-care into your daily life already this far. That is such an achievement and I am so proud of all of you. I know it's felt really good for me and I hope that you are feeling rested, rejuvenated, and ready to take on your upcoming week. Last week on Self-Care Sunday, we discussed social media and self-care, and I gave about five tips and tricks of how to honor your boundaries, your own energy, um, while engaging in in social media platforms such as Facebook and Instagram. And given that we're in the middle of a global pandemic right now, and there's a lot of stress politically and socially amongst friends and family, I thought that that was super important to cover. However, on the other side of that, a lot of us are also spending a lot of time at home. So this week, I want to cover self-care and your physical space in your home and how to incorporate having your own dedicated self-care corner into your home so that you can have a place to go, to spend time alone, to engage in your self-care challenge activity, um, to use it however you want to use it, but in But the main goal is to have a place that relaxes you, calms you, and makes you feel good. So I'm going to be showing you my self-care space um, in just a few minutes here and giving you some tips and tricks of what I incorporated to build mine and how I use it on a daily basis. So what's the importance of having a physical space dedicated to self-care in your home? Couldn't you just do it on the couch or have it in your bedroom or at your desk or in all the other useful functional places in your home? Absolutely, you could, and sometimes I do. But when I dedicated a space in my home to self-care, the amount of time that I spent intentionally engaging in self-care astronomically went up. If I'm doing something on the couch, if I'm journaling or meditating, I'm thinking about a million other things. I'm thinking about what I have to do later, what TV show I'm going to watch when I'm done with this. If I'm doing it at my kitchen table, I'm thinking about what I'm going to be cooking later. And if I'm doing it in my bed, I'm thinking about sleep. You get the picture. So I think being able to have a space where that's just dedicated to self-care, even if it's a tiny little corner in your home, can really increase the amount of time you're being intentional and really getting the most out of it and getting the biggest bang for your buck. So this is my self-care space. As you can see over here, I have my workout bike, my yoga mat. I have my workout materials organized just there. I have some decorations on the walls. And this is where I go to do mindful movement and just make my body feel good. On the other side over here, I have my friend Marshall modeling for me where I like to sit, relax, drink a cup of coffee, meditate, journal. I have a salt lamp. I have an overhead lamp to read at night. Um, But I like to spend time out here in the day with lots of natural light as well. So that was my self-care space. I hope you guys like it. It's my favorite spot in my entire house. Um, So now I want to give you some tips and tricks of how to build your own and what things you can incorporate that really make it special and intentional of being a self-care space. As you could see, for me, I really wanted to incorporate that rest and relaxation and mindful movement into my self-care space. So I ended up getting a Peloton because a Peloton has lots of different workouts. They have guided meditation, they have yoga, they have cycling, obviously, strength, boot camps, etc. And so I can really use that space for what I need it to be on any given day. So on that side, that's kind of where I get to move my body, I get to breathe, I get to re- I get to go really hard on a workout or do a super chill restorative yoga class. So what materials should you incorporate into a self-care space that you're going to be using primarily for mindful movement? So that's the side of my self-care space that had the Peloton bike, the yoga mat, and things like that. For me, I really did want something that really could get my body moving in a really invigorating and fast, intense way because sometimes that is self-care for me. So I did get a Peloton bike. Um, There are lots of different workout cycling bikes or treadmills if that's for you. If not, really all you need is a yoga mat, yoga blocks, um, a yoga bolster, 
and yoga blankets as well as a yoga strap. So just kind of getting yourself set up for yoga is a really easy way to incorporate a mindful movement um, little station in your home. Also, I have resistance bands, I have, you know, 10 pound weights, I have, you know, things like that too, that I can do some floor workouts as well. So there's lots of things that you can buy. Primarily, I buy all my stuff on Amazon. So just head to Amazon and search, you know, yoga bolster, yoga blocks, um, and some pretty decently priced stuff can come up. So that's how I set up my mindful movement space. So now let's talk about the other side of my space with the more easygoing, you know, sip a cup of coffee, read a book type of space. So find a cozy chair, bean bag, um, even a blanket or anywhere that you like to lay down or sit and feel really cozy in. So for me, it was my flower chair. I've had that flower chair for years and years, and it is a really super cozy spot. So for me, I love it. My cats also happen to love it, have kind of claimed it as well. Um, but again, it could be as simple as a really small bean bag. It, you can make this as simple or as complex as you really want it to be, and that's the beauty of it, is that it's just for you and what you want to use to enjoy your self-care. The other piece is I have in my self-care space electronic candles. So I, I do have real candles sometimes, but I like to keep candles in there permanently, and I have a remote control that I can turn on and off. So I like having those to kind of add to the ambiance as well, especially when I'm doing a yoga class or reading. Um, you want adequate lighting so you can order twinkle lights or something that's really soothing. You don't want anything too um, bright or harsh lighting, but something that's soothing that allows you to see, especially if you're journaling or reading in your self-care space. And finally, blankets. I have so many blankets. I don't know if you noticed um, as I was showing you panning around the room, but blankets and just feeling cozy is one of the most important things to add to your self-care space. A bonus tip is also decorating your self-care space that empowers you and inspires you. So for me, I really use my self-care space for rest and relaxation, so I wanted to put things on the wall that relaxed me and made me feel good. So I chose to do flowers and artwork, but it might be a little bit different for you. You might want to put some inspi inspiring quotes on the wall or a, you know, a portrait of a person that really inspires you that reminds you of why you do this really important work. So there's lots of different things you could do for that decoration piece, but once you get some art and some things on the wall between your lighting and, you know, all the different materials around you, you're really going to create a comprehensive, multifaceted, functional self-care space. And it could be as simple as this tiny corner behind me is it's really all you need to start. It can be as big as mine. It can be an entire room. I actually know someone that has a yoga room in their apartment. Um, and you just really make it what it needs to be for you so that you're able to intentionally take this time. And that is our goal through this 30 day challenge is to intentionally take time out of your day in order to engage in self-care. So I wish you the best on this week of navigating your self-care challenge. I hope you continue to find something daily to do on following the calendar that you created for yourself at the start of the challenge. That is all for me this week. I will see you next week for week four of our Self-Care Sunday series. See you then.